Okay, we're now in uh, the introduction to Psalm 90, verses 16 and 17. And again, in order to make uh, certain that you understand the context and the importance, i got to take you back to Adam. That's what the Bible always does. That's what Paul is going to do. So it's really important that you get, you know, kind of grounded in this. Adam matured 130 years after the fall. That justified the 490 that he was in because he matured during it. Okay, but the actual underlying grant starts when he wins it and ran until Jared in 622. That you might remember. So that you have two things going on here. You've got a 490 in absolute historical terms that somebody must qualify by super maturing at least one person or else time ends that one person at least was Adam represented by his son Seth being born the year that he super matured when he was 130 years after the fall not when he was 130 years old but 130 years after the fall so therefore time could be justified to continue until the 490th year at which point believers had to vote and at least one of them did I mean you know you could say it was Adam because he's still alive until 1042 um, so believers voted and of course Seth is alive and it looks like he won a 490 also because of this name because that's an honorific name so believers voted here therefore time could continue and therefore the time grant that Adam won that extended to here could actually play this is really important for what I'm going to tell you about Israel so notice the difference this is absolute time but this is the time when he won it and this is the end end of his time grant so now we're tracking to Jared Jared's time grant would run another 490 years we'll round it off at 500 just to make it simple Okay, so that's about 1100. Okay, but his son Enoch was so good, God just took him. So Enoch got a 490 also. So now we're going to start tracking to Enoch because Enoch's got his later, so the latest one to expire is going to be Enoch. Okay, but Enoch has a kid named Methuselah that he deliberately names because he's warning of the flood. So while these people are voting positive, the world as a whole, either in the believer voting window, voting to know God, or in the unbeliever voting window, at the end of the first thousand years, voting to, to be saved. Okay, it didn't go well for everybody else. But, because there was an Enoch, time continues. And in Enoch's case, we introduce the second kind of time grant, which is a 1,000 year, a 1,000 year award rather than just a 490 this is extremely important all of the history about Messiah is based on this the thousand year award okay so the first guy to get it so that you understand and can track it is Enoch and he gets it in 687 so just like we saw with Adam see how the time changed this is absolute historical time but he gets it here so the 490 actually continues that long same for Enoch, it continues till 1687, which is 30 years after the flood. So there are two time grants with Enoch. One is running 490 years and the other one is running 1000. Now, there's some question as to whether Methuselah in his own person was granted an award twice or whether he's riding on Enoch's time grant. I'm not 100% sure. My guess is that Methuselah himself won it, too. But either way, there's enough time granted for Noah, down here in row 34, to be born. Okay, because 1056 is less than 490 years from 687. Alright, and it's also less than 1,000 years. Okay, but see, 687... 687 plus 490 is 1177, which is before Noah super matures. So that argues for Methuselah also getting the 490. 
okay, and his son was named Lamech, born in 874, so that would have been when Methuselah got his award, and 874 plus 490 is 1364, see that's still earlier than Noah's supermaturity, which occurs here in 1556, so then that means Methuselah won it twice, so 874 plus 490, or else Lamech won it, 1364, it would have expired, and Noah was not old enough yet, and he hadn't matured. So then we have to add another 490. Even though the 1,000 is granted, the 490 still has to be granted, too. So that goes to 1854. So somebody won it before Noah did, and it was either Methuselah or Lamech, who I don't have highlighted, but maybe I should. Okay? So that bought time. We got a thousand years bought by Enoch, which covers Noah and goes past the initial thousand in absolute historical time. So this absolute historical time is financed because this guy back here won the thousand year award. So this time could play and the people didn't vote to, no, didn't vote to get saved. That's why the flood's going to occur and this was already foreknown back in Enoch's day. And he was the guy telling everybody, so much so that he names his kid, Hi, the flood occurs when he dies. So the judgment that the flood was going to occur was announced a thousand years prior to when it happened. And if Enoch hadn't won the time award, there wouldn't have been a voting period to get out of the flood. See, they could have gotten out of it, but they didn't. All right, so now you got Lamech who has Noah. Noah means rest. That means they know the flood's going to happen and Noah's going to survive. Meanwhile, though, it's taking Noah 500 years. That tells you how tough time was, okay, how hard it was to, to grow up. 500 years, unlike Lamech, unlike Methuselah, unlike Enoch, it took Noah 500 years before he super matured, okay? And he supermatures just before the thousand year time grant to Enoch runs out. All right? And when Noah supermatures, all the human race is going to go except him. So he gets a 490 and he gets a 1000. Track this with me now. So that 1000 is going to last from, 10, from 1556 after Adam's fall to 2556. Track this with me so it's gonna you'll understand what happens to Israel. So 2556 now. All right, we're gonna start scrolling forward. We're going the the 490 of of Noah runs out in 2046. Abraham picks it up. Abraham also gets a 1000, but we still are tracking in Noah's 1000. Noah's 1000 runs out 2556. 2556. Well, well, well. When was that? 2556 is when it runs out. And our boy, Moses, is born 30 years after, after, after the end of what should have been time if there was no Abraham, okay? After. So Moses couldn't have been born. Please follow me on this. Moses could not have been born if there wasn't an Abraham because Noah's time grant was going to run out in 2556. It didn't matter what the absolute historical time was because the time grant for Noah started here and was going to end. This is really important to understanding the whole idea about time in Israel in particular. Okay, so time would have ended if Abraham hadn't been here because why? Because also there was a 490 which is shorter than 1000. So, the 1,000 grant, sure, yeah, that lasts until 2556, but, it, uh, excuse me, the 490 runs out sooner. It's the earliest of. Okay, it's first in, first out. Okay, so Abraham had the mature in 2046, or time would have ended. And there would have been no Moses, no Israel, no nothing. I'd not be here making this video. That's how dramatic it is. All right. Now, Abraham gets a covenant. He super matures. 
he gets a covenant that is also a 490 and a 1000. So now again, track with me. That was to last till 2556, but the 490 ends sooner. So now we look at Abram. It's the same story. Now he's the boy carrying the baton for time. And his contract is going to end 2046 plus 490. 2536 is as long as that 490 lasts. And 2536, right? Let's do it again. 2046 plus 490 is 2536. Okay, 2536 is what? 50 years. 2546, 36. 50 years before Moses would even be born. Uh-oh. Then there's got to be somebody carrying the baton between Abraham and Moses. Who? Otherwise, there's no time. And the who, who gets it, I mean, it, it's obviously Jacob because God makes a covenant with Jacob. That's, you know, where he got lamed. All right, right here in 2166. And either directly or indirectly, it's Joseph. And I'm, it, it's based on Joseph, so Joseph super matured here in 2176 at the ripe old age of 17. So see, you can super mature while young. And one of the evidences of that is God's always talking to Joseph, and God had given Joseph this dream, which is why his brothers were so mad, which was basically a covenant that Joseph would be the head of the family. You know, that dream with the multicolored coat and the sun and the moon and the stars bowing down to him. Okay, that's God's way of saying, hi, I picked you. Hi, you and I have a covenant. Hi, you're super mature. Okay, and that's why the brothers were jealous. 2176, now 490, takes you to 2666. And now Moses can be born. Notice that during all this time, okay, we come back here. Voting window for the 490, the official 490 of history that's running in absolute real time. Noah votes. He, he votes, he wins. That supports the second 2000. Continuing. The actual second 2000 ends here because it's a 2050 unit e It's a 1050 unit each. Here's the voting period for unbelievers. It doesn't go well, but it doesn't cause a flood. That therefore begins the new um, third, 1050, in the year 2100 from Adam. This is what the Jews call the age of Torah. Okay, but it's really beginning 54 years early. That's very important. Okay, it's beginning 54 years early because time would have run out if it didn't. So you see the interplay between the absolute historical time and the underlying 490 time grants that are tied to individuals and have to run contiguous. See, it's 490, 490, 490. See, 1556, 490. Whether or not this is going on. Whether or not this is going on. Okay? So it's two time tracks. One is personal and underlying it, financing the absolute historical track. And yeah, somebody within that time period, within the 490, see, here's another 490 that's going from 1610 to... to um, 2050. Somebody's got to win during that time period. All right, that's true. But if the person who won his time grant runs out sooner, then that's when time ends, irrespective of what historical time is. So the promise isn't related exactly to historical time. It ends up being related to who's carrying the baton, like in a relay race. So look how close it came, 54 years. And time had to, would have ended 54 years early if Abram hadn't super matured. Okay, but he did. So now you're looking for who's carrying the ball, who's carrying the baton 490 years after Abram. Okay, well, it can, there can be other people who win it, and then you're tracking to the last person. And the person in question here is Joseph, and him, 490 years after him, is the exodus to the day almost okay that's the dramatic story we're being told here and Moses knows that story 
And when Moses is during the historical voting period, because he knows he knows how to rightly count his days, we saw that from um, his prayer, he knows he's voting. He's voting in the right time. There only has to be one vote. And it was Moses. There could have been other people too, but the Bible is targeting him. All right, Moses leaves Egypt in order to in order to know God better, and that's the story that's told to you in Hebrews 11. All right, and sort of indirectly and more you know humbly because Moses is writing his own life story in in Genesis on the you know the chapters on Moses. Okay, so Moses is voting during the voting window there, and he records his vote in Psalm 90 verses 12 through 15. That brings us up to snuff as to where we left off. Okay, now it gets super dramatic. Here we have the Exodus. There is a huge change because God had all, had said to Moses, Listen, I want to start all over with you. Let me wipe out these people. They're just kvetching all the time. I start over with you. Moses says, No. You wipe out the people. What is that going to say about you? And I want to say that's in Numbers 14. Uh, there are two passages on it. Um, and twice God made that offer. Moses said no. So he, in effect, is transferring his right to the 490 and to the 1000, which he won both. Because God's making a covenant with him there, saying, Hi, I want to wipe out Israel I'll start over with you. That's the same offer he made to Abram. Except there was nobody to wipe out with Abram. He just made it with Abram. Okay, well, he's going to renew it with Moses instead. Moses says, no, with the sons of Abram, not just me. Okay, so time got transferred. The right to carry time got transferred to Israel as a nation. So now Israel as a nation has to vote. And that's where the sabbatical years come from. And that's why there are 70 of them in a 490. They coordinate with these voting periods, as you're going to see dramatically in, in this video later on. Okay? They coordinate with and actually fund the voting periods of history. But they play for Israel every seventh year. Okay, so if she misses her sabbatical years, which means she's not voting, then time ends. So there's a change in the rules about carrying time here. At the Exodus, 1440 B.C., going by the Bible's own dating system, that equates to our 1440 B.C. Okay, now... From this point forward, this is Israel's birthday on the 15th of Nisan, which is piggybacked on the 14th of Nisan. 1440 BC is Israel's birthday. And if Israel were properly observing the time the way Moses prayed it and the way the Bible records it, then the 14th day after every single vernal equinox would be Israel's birthday at sundown. But Israel doesn't know how to tell time anymore because she's not looking at the Bible to remember how to tell time. And of course, all the Christian scholars are listening to what the Jews are saying about what time is. And that's why everybody's so confused about the dates in the Bible that they don't even know if the Exodus is real. It's really pathetic and it's really sad that, that here a brain out can just plot the dates the way the Bible tells you. And prove all this stuff about time. And yet the scholars don't know and the Jews don't remember. They used to know because Moses knew it. We just, we just saw his prayer about it. And he was praying during the voting window, which he knew doggone well what it was. So how come a brain out's like the only person on the planet right now, except for people who've read what I wrote, who knows this? Because nobody's looking at the Bible. Is that embarrassing or what? Okay, so let's beat ourselves up for 90 seconds and now start to learn what we should have learned. Okay, Moses votes during the voting window. Six years later, Israel is allowed out. Now notice this real well. David is going to come into play during the last unbeliever voting period 
of the 1,000. From 3,100 to 3,150 is the unbeliever voting window. A new nation, Israel, just got started in 2666, just before the end of the contiguous 3,000 time grant. So Moses wins. Okay, remember we had Noah's time grant. Ran out in 2556, but then Abraham won it. So that would run out in 3046. Ooh, 3046, hmm, that's just after the third 1,000. Somebody had to win a 1,000. Abraham's was going to run out 46 years later. And the person who won it was Moses, except that he didn't want God to start over with him. He didn't want to be God's mouthpiece. So it got transferred to Israel. Israel is now the poster boy to carry time. Okay, and just in time, because Joseph's personal 490 ran out. Okay, so the next 400 years, from 2666 to 31, 3150, really. Okay, so how long is that? 3150 minus 2666, 484 years, are going to be the most tumultuous years in history to date. Why? Because a whole nation now has to vote. A whole nation, not just one person voting. A whole nation. Okay? And it's still true that somebody's got a super mature, but the poster boy who started the super maturity is Moses. But now there's this new criterion that makes it tougher for time to continue. Israel as a nation has to vote. And that's why the sabbatical years are there. Because 70, the way the sabbatical years work, 70 by 70 gets 10 more years because there are 10 sabbatical years in a 70 year period. All right, that makes it 80. Or the alternative way of talking about it is that pays for 10. So now we got 60. All right, but on those 10, there are more sabbatical years owed. 10 sabbatical years means that there's two more. Plus, it's a 70 year period, you got Jubilee, then you got two more, and it's a long kind of convoluted math, but by basically the 50 years that the Gentiles get from here to here is bought by the 70 years that end up being in a 490 year period that Israel observes her sabbatical years. That's the origin for Daniel 9, that rule. And this is why that rule is there. 70 buys 50. This is what's going to be behind Psalm 90 verses 16 and 17, is the importance of Israel voting so that time will continue. Okay. This is why the, 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 I keep on stressing it so much. Okay, now in, um, see in the upper left hand corner here, um, in cell A2, um, 10 ways this timeline differs is a doc that's on the web, and you can read the note if you'd rather read the note, but it's a doc that's on the web that in its item number 9 shows you how the 70 years, the 70 sabbatical years, mathematically buys the 50 years for the goyim, the Gentiles, the non-believers to vote. It's astonishing math. I almost k killed myself when I, when I found it a couple years ago. Okay. So if you want further details, just click in cell A2 of the worksheet, which hopefully you've downloaded by now, to understand it. So this is the panoramic import of this. Just before the third 1000s to end, just in time, Moses wins the 1000 and a 490. Now the 490, of course, was going to run out that year, the 1000 from Abraham doesn't end until here, but you know, that's not a very close window. That's about three or four hundred years. Okay, fine. But this was the very year that Joseph's 490 ran out. And Israel was so negative, Moses was the one the guy wanted to start over with. So there was nobody else going to win the award. 
It was Moses or nobody. You and I are alive today because Moses voted right here in this voting window to know God. Period. Otherwise, we'd all not be here. And he was so humble, just like the Bible says. He didn't, he didn't want God to start over with him. He wanted to protect the people. He basically abdicated a second time. He was Pharaoh of Egypt. He abdicated from that in order to learn God. God himself then gave him what would have been even better than being Pharaoh. Start over and I'll create the whole nation out of you. Okay? And Moses said no to that too. And that's why you and I are here. Okay? We got grafted in, as it were. Israel got grafted in. Okay, and the story gets even more dramatic. So let's keep going. Okay, 2666, that justifies the third 1,000 to begin, okay, or, you know, to be, to exist. And its ending is going to occur with David. Now, there was a big threat to that. Okay, here's 2666. Here's the end of Abram's personal 1,000. Remember I ended the last video saying Israel almost didn't vote? Yeah, because why? Because this is 1050 BC and in this year Israel rejects God as king. That story is told in the book of Samuel. Alright? Israel rejected God as king. They, she wanted a human king just like everybody else. Okay, she had already been, you know, apostate through the judges, but God would deliver her every once in a while. And, of course, Moses is talking to that when in Psalm 90 when he runs it with a total of 350 syllables. Because Moses is talking on two tracks, just like Paul will be doing, just like Isaiah did, just like Daniel does, and just like uh, David's uh, 1 Chronicles 24 does. He's, you're telling a, a panoramic story of all history. And then at the same time, you're taking each syllable as one year consecutively and you're tracking to a specific period. Psalm 90 is 350 syllables. It is written in 1400, just before Israel enters the land and just before Moses goes up to Mount, Hor Mount, what was it, Mount Horeb and dies, okay, at God's order. Um, he's, he's writing a 350 syllable poem, which is 350 years, which takes you to 1050 when Israel's going to reject God as king. And that is why, that's why, why we're getting into Psalm 90 verses 16 and 17, because he's warning Israel she's going to do that 350 years in advance. Now, again, Israel became the sole repository of the baton for time. Deuteronomy 32, 8. If Israel votes negative, there ain't no more time, there ain't no more humanity, the whole thing tanks. Now you can kind of understand why the Jews are, are nervous and have had such a tough time. And, you know, a lot of them are hard to live with, too. Okay? This, this is why it's really hard to be Jewish, okay? This is why. Because you got the whole all of time on your shoulders, and you know Jews don't talk about it too much to the to the Gentiles, but amongst themselves, it's like who wants to have this kind of life? You know, and they're either really pro or they're really against, and then there's this. Some of them have a real big superiority complex, and some of them have a real big inferiority complex. And how do we be a people? And how do we be diplomatic? And you know, it's bahal to be the most important group of people in history and yet you're a small group of people that nobody likes and you have all this talent nobody else has because God's got to point you out because he is after all the real God and he's, and he's uh, picked whoever he picked who happens to be the Jews I mean that's a really hard life to have okay so you can begin to appreciate it now and so in 1050 BC, Israel says, uh-uh, we want to be like everybody else, please. We're tired of being special. And time almost ended as a result. That's why I've got it marked in gray. Gray is always threat to civilization. See, that's, you know, the mark there. Time would end absent someone so positive God, God can justify time continuing. Okay? Like the flood. This is tantamount to another flood period. And you'll notice that it's occurring just before the third 1,000 is going to die. 
Uh oh. Abraham's personal 1,000 runs out, but Moses is running because Moses won the award on behalf of Israel. But yet, it depends on Israel now. So what are we going to do here? Okay, well, that story is recorded in Samuel where, you know, David is going to be born. And he is born specifically 400 years after the Exodus. Okay, just as Israel was enslaved for 400 years, and Paul goes through this accounting in Acts 13.20 in the Greek. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the English Bibles put it in a different verse. Um, Paul is balancing between the negative time, just like Psalm 90.15 says, okay, between the negative time that Israel was like in the wilderness and in slavery, versus the positive time that she's going to end up being under David. Because he's explaining why Psalm 90.15, give us as many good days as you gave us bad days, is being fulfilled. Which he's going to continue to explain by the meter that tracks to Psalm 90 in Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, if I ever get there. It's absolutely astonishing what he's doing there. But in order for you to understand what he's doing, i got to show you the history that's underneath it. So David is born 400 years after the Exodus. All right, the Exodus occurs here. David is born here. All right, and that in order to rescue Israel from herself. Now at this point, you'll notice that we're coming to the end of a 1,000. All right, at this point, David is the guy, 2 Samuel 7, who's going to be appointed as the father of Messiah. David means beloved. David gets like every single contract there is from God. David gets six, six time grants. And they're all benchmarked to certain events in his life. One of the time grants, the latest of which, is benchmarked to his year of death which is communicated as 963 B.C. via 1 Kings 6, 1, which all the scholars misread because they use Josephus instead of the Bible to, tr to decide that David died at 70 because Josephus was too stupid to live. Of course, he'd been under persecution, so you can't blame him for being off. But all of his numbers about, about Jewish time were completely screwed up. The Bible proves that David died at 77, but nobody reads the Bible. We do anything but the Bible, you know, is respectable. So David has a thousand-year time grant that starts at his death. He also has a thousand-year time grant that starts when he's crowned at Hebron. That's the first time he's crowned. He also has a, a thousand-year time grant that's based on when he retires, which is 977 years before he died. Okay? And he also has a time grant, and this is the most important one in many ways, that's based on when he's crowned king over all Israel. I'm not sure quite what date, but I think it was 25 keys left. I'm not 100% sure yet. I have to still track that. Now, it's really 104 B.C. because 25 keys left is late in the year. But for math purposes, you know, when you're subtracting whole years, you treat it like 1003. And Christ has to be born... A thousand years later, say now all this math is beginning to hopefully uh, pay off for you. Christ has to be born a thousand years, okay, after, after David's king. Because Christ has to be born king in order to fulfill the promise to David that there will be a last David. It's really important to stress this. Notice that David is crowned king over all Israel and just for round number purposes, say 103 B.C. Okay? Notice that that's just before the end of the voting period. Okay? Now it's actually toward the beginning, a little, little after the beginning of the voting period for the whole world. So that there is an Israel with a king who believes in God that people can vote with their feet and find. There is now a nation they can go to, headed up by a faithful king, 
Although, you know, when I say faithful king, bear in mind, God's heroes, you know, they, they screw up big time. You know, David actually uh, had his general murdered so they could cover up having had illicit sex with the general's wife. That's Bathsheba, and from David and Bathsheba will come Christ. Okay, through Nathan. All right, so here it is, the last 50 years of this 3,000. David is crowned king, so time can continue. All right, because look, 266, we got until 3666. Okay, but at the same time, we've only got a 490 here. So 2666 plus 490 is 3156. Okay, and you think, wow, well, that's not a problem. You know, here's 3150, here's 3156. Uh-oh, but wait a minute. The people, the only people who are allowed to vote rejected God. Rejected God. A hundred years prior to the deadline. There ain't nobody. Okay, there ain't nobody. If it's not somebody in Israel, there ain't nobody to continue time. Because... Moses, they, God didn't start over with Moses at Moses' own request. It's the whole nation Israel, and she ain't voting. But David, of course God knew all this, born 10 years after Israel's negative vote, David voted, and by the time, like Joseph, David was a teenager, David had super matured too, and of course that's the story of Goliath, and you know, by the time he was 18, he married Saul's, you know, daughter Michal, and you know, the whole story, you can read about it in Samuel. The point is that David super matured, and David gets a 490 based on each one of the major events of his life here. So there's a 490 from 10, well, I'm not sure about 1040. There's a 490 measured from, from Hebron. There's a 490 measured from his retirement. There's a 490 measured from his death. There's a 490 measured from, from him being king of all Israel. Okay, and each one of these 490s literally, literally supports time. Okay, and that's why Daniel 9 is so important because what basically happens is David's 490s transfer to the temple. But the temple had to be built in time. Okay, that date right there, see, Moses' personal 490 runs out in 950 BC. The temple had to be built. By 950 BC, because again it goes back to Israel has to vote. Okay, well David voted, yeah, but the criterion is still Israel too, and David's king of Israel, so yeah, that counts. And there are all these time grants based on it. But um, hello, Israel has to vote, and the sign of the vote is the temple, and that's the contract in One Kings nine. Okay, so. Um, we're going to pick up in the next video with this history. I'm sorry that, again, the introductions are so long. But if you don't understand what is underneath the verses, then, it, you know, you're just reading words that you don't even know what they mean. They might as well be in Swahili. Okay, signing off for now.